The world from space to Apollo 10, a globe of jewels set against a background of black velvet and the stars. Man draws life from the sun, but he venerates the moon. A quarter of a million miles away, to poets, the unattainable woman. But now she's within the reach of man, and the only astronauts to see her saw her as dirty beach sand with a lot of footprints on it. So this dress rehearsal, the final step before man realizes the impossible, a dream as old as man himself, to reach the unreachable star. This is a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10. Tonight, a close-up look at the dress rehearsal for man's arrival on the moon. Reporting now from the CBS News Apollo headquarters, Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Every time there is another Apollo mission, we say that it is the most demanding yet. Because every time there's another Apollo mission, that happens to be true. Each mission is planned as another step toward the ultimate goal of landing a man on the moon. To those on the outside, each mission is an heroic adventure demanding man's courage and his curiosity. And that happens to be true, too. But like all great adventures, each mission counts on scientific techniques and complicated hardware. Apollo 10, counting down tonight for a launch on Sunday afternoon, marks the first time that the complete Apollo spacecraft will operate around the moon. And the mission's going to go like this. After that launch, Sunday afternoon, the spacecraft will go into a 115-mile orbit around the Earth. On the second orbit, over on the far side from where I am, over the Pacific Ocean, the third stage of the great Saturn rocket will propel it an extra 10,000 feet per second to a speed of 25,000 miles an hour to escape Earth's gravity. And out here at about 10,000 miles, the command module will separate, turn around, withdraw the lunar excursion module from the third stage, and then they'll be on their own. On this long trip, 235,000 miles out to the moon, they'll reach there three days later on Wednesday. They'll go into orbit 69 miles around the moon for one day. And then on Thursday, Tom Stafford and Eugene Cernan will climb out of the command module, leaving it, now called Charlie Brown, behind with John Young. They, in the lunar module, called Snoopy, will circle the Earth, uh, circle the moon twice and they'll come down within 10 miles of the moon's surface, within 50,000 feet, over the landing site, where if all goes well on this mission, man will land on the moon in July. On, after two, two orbits of the moon, they will come back up 69 miles high and rejoin Charlie Brown, John Young, in the command module. And then, after another day of circling the moon, the service propulsion system engine will have to fire on Saturday to send them back on the way home. They'll come back this long trip back to Earth, come directly into the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles an hour, and land just east of the American Samoan Islands, 400 miles east of Pango Pango. The lunar excursion module is built by the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation of Bethpage, Long Island, and Nelson Benton is there. The lunar module is not as small as you might expect. It is nearly 23 feet from the base of its spraddle leg landing gear to its top. On Earth, it weighs about 15 tons. It is not a picture of aerodynamic grace, but aerodynamics play no role in the atmospheric void around the moon when Stafford and Cernan take the limb down to within 50,000 feet of the lunar surface. 50,000 feet is only slightly higher than you might fly on a commercial jet flying from coast to coast. But flying above the moon is different. There must be protection from the extreme heat and from the extreme cold. That is why the reflecting blankets, as they are called, colorfully surround the lunar module. Engineers here at Grumman are interested specifically in how the landing radar performs on this, its first flight. But overall, they are interested in the LEMS performance and this, its first venture into the lunar sphere of influence, the environment for which this vehicle was so painstakingly designed and built. Walter? We'll look at the crew of Apollo 10 in a moment. 